Chapter 3. The Beast is Slain. Kowloon, Hong Kong. A 59-year-old Chinese man with slick back silver hair and a thin frame in a thousand yuan suit, sitting in the back seat of his limousine en route to the Ritz-Carlton Hotel with his mobile phone to his ear. He sneers and peers intensely across the car at someone in the back seat with him while he addresses someone else on the phone. These financial concerns are yours, not mine. You will have what we agreed, when we agreed. You make the payment, we ship the merchandise. There will be no alterations to our dealings. He grins, his eyes ablaze as he listens and stares lustfully at his companion. A pale, thin, 12-year-old Indonesian girl in a tigger onesie. She looks afraid and shifts in her seat and tries to avoid eye contact with him. Well, I'm glad you feel that way. It is in your own best interest, really. We can always find new trackers, new poachers, new buyers for our merchandise. But delays, alterations, can be tiring and costly, and I will not tolerate it. It would be extremely unwise to disappoint me. The last person to disappoint me was very unfortunate. He was paid a visit by my triad partners. You can meet him if you like. He is at the bottom of Victoria Harbour. His grin widens until it looks like it would split his face as he hears what he wants to hear. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Expect our shipment to reach you in two days. We will be in touch. He hangs up the phone, his eyes never leaving the anxious, trembling girl. It's simple, my dear. He begins as he edges closer to her. Business brings money, and money brings power. And power gets me what I want. And whose business is it? He says, his face now inches from hers. To tell me how to conduct my business. The girl's wide, fearful eyes well up. No one tells Mr. Xian how to do business. And no one can stop me getting what I want. A tear rolls down her cheek, and Xian spots it. He reaches up and catches it with his finger. (laughs) You look so adorable when you cry, he says, his eyes glazing over. So adorable, I could eat you. (laughs) He scoops her tear with his finger and pushes it in his mouth, swallowing, drinking her tear. He temporarily loses his breath, savouring the moment. The terrified girl whimpers. The car slows to a stop, which snaps Xian out of his lechery. The Ritz Carlton, sir, the driver says over the intercom. Xian sits back in his seat. The car door swings outward, opened by the hotel doorman, an over-enthusiastic, ingratiating man with an obvious brown hairpiece and black framed spectacles with thick lenses, giving his eyes a fisheye effect appearance. Ah, Mr. Xian, it's always a pleasure and privilege to have you back with us. You're once again honoured and humbled by your powerful presence, sir. Shen climbs out of the car. Yes, yes, he says, clearly agitated by the annoying doorman's alliteration. My usual room, is it ready? Oh, absolutely affirmative, sir. We have been excitedly expecting your apprised arrival, sir. The doorman says, holding the hotel door open for Shen, who strides in. You can collect your kept key from the reception right. Over there, sir. Xian stops in his tracks and steps in close to the doorman. Oh, and doorman, wait half an hour and then have the girl and my bags brought up to my room. The doorman peers into the limo and spots the young frightened girl, but he is particularly interested in a beige case on the back seat. I trust you can handle this with discretion. Xian says, giving the doorman a fierce expression. The doorman sucks in a breath, left only with one answer. Of course, sir. Leave it to me. A short while later, in the hotel's Grand Victoria Harbour suite, Xian has already showered and is wearing his gold silken dressing gown. Standing at the hotel minibar, he stares out of the floor-to-ceiling windows at the panoramic view of the island. It is lit up like a giant pinball machine. And I am in control of the flivers. (laughs) He muses and begins slapping the sides of the minibar counter as if they are buttons on a machine. He laughs out loud. He whips his head around and gazes at the king-size bed for a moment. 
his hand gently massaging his genitals. He quickly draws in a breath and licks his dry lips. I need a drink. He turns back to the minibar counter and reaches for a bottle of single malt. He is about to pour himself a drink when there is a knock on the door. He slams a bottle down onto the counter, annoyed that the ill-timed interruption has ruined his moment. He rushes over and opens the door to reveal the doorman holding two flight cases. Shen's eyes flash with lust when he notices the girl, now wearing a long hooded coat beside the doorman. Her head is lowered and her eyes never look up. Discretion? No problem, sir. No attention. Really smooth. Shen stares hard at the doorman. He walks back into the room. Come in. Put the bags here. Shen signals with his hand. As the girl slowly edges into the room with the doorman behind her, Shen returns to the counter to pour that drink. The doorman places the cases down and turns to Shen. Is there absolutely anything else I can dutifully do for you, Mr. Shen, sir? He says, smiling. Yes. Shen says, pouring whiskey into a glass. Get out. The doorman's smile drops and he quickly shoots a helpless, sympathetic glance at the girl, who is pleading with him with her eyes to help her in some way. He looks away, his head hanging low. Of course, sir, he says, as he makes for the door. No problem at all. You just have yourself a hot night. He reaches into his jacket pocket and pulls out a small white card and places it on the bedside cabinet. Shen doesn't notice, but the girl does. The doorman shoots her another glance. One she can't quite understand, but takes a little reassurance from. Take care now. Bye bye then. The doorman says and quickly steps out of the doorway and pulls the door closed with a thump. Shen sits the bottle down and turns to the girl. You can take off that coat now, dear. The girl doesn't move. She just stares at the floor. Look at me. She slowly looks up at him with fearful eyes. Take off the coat. The girl obeys and removes the coat. Shen moves close to her. Standing in her onesie, she trembles as he reaches out to her. He takes the coat from her and walks over to his bags. He throws the coat onto a chair and reaches down for his beige case. He enters numbers on a numerical keypad and the case unlocks. He slowly opens the case. It is full of compartments. He reaches into one labelled Personal and pulls out a small glass test tube containing a cream-coloured powder. He turns to the girl and holds up the tube. Do you know what this is? She looks at the tube and struggles with her answer. Drugs? She finally says in a shrill voice. How quaint. Yes, drugs. But not just any drug. Cocaine and heroin have their place, their time. But this can be taken every day to take the components of an animal, grind it down, ingest it. Rhino horn, it has the power to heal. Tiger bone, it gives you strength. And should you ingest the penis of a tiger, let's just say it is very stimulating. And if combined, you can become a very powerful man indeed. A beast. Well, at least that's what we tell our clients. Shien walks over to his drink. With his back to the girl, he pulls the stopper out of the test tube and tips the contents into his drink. He swirls the liquid around and turns to the girl who hasn't moved. You really don't understand the word I'm saying, do you? The girl just stares blankly at him. Adorable, he says huskily. He gulps down the contents of his glass, hisses, and places the glass back on the counter. Oh, our product does most of what we say it does. That's why it's a multi-billion wine industry. The West, they just can't accept it. Does the penis of a tiger make a man more virile? That is up to the man. Mind over matter, dear. But we have a substance, very similar to Viagra, that we add to each batch, completely unbeknown to our clients. Actually a Western creation, an aggressive drug. It really does stimulate in all the right places. Complete satisfaction. It's just better for business. He slowly begins to approach her. So what if a man who is already powerful, already like those wild animals, a man who is already a beast, 
takes our product. The girl begins to tremble as Xian moves in close to her. Well, you're about to find out, dear. The girl looks desperately into Xian's insane eyes. From one glistening eyeball to the other, a huge dirty grin stretches across his face, but his smile quickly turns to a grimace, as if he is in pain. <coughs> Confused, he shifts his body and <coughs> seems to recover. His eyes fall back on the girl and his smile returns. He seizes her suddenly. She cries out as he rushes her onto the king-size bed. The bed catches the back of the girl's legs and she falls back, with Xien crashing down on top of her. He begins writhing around, laughing hysterically as the girl cries and squirms around under him. He gets on his hands and knees over her as she cowers under him. Adorable glass eyes, like an innocent baby deer, unaware of the tiger, poised in the grass, ready to pounce. Shen's expression changes to pain and confusion again. This episode lasts longer and seems more intense. Shen groans and his body shudders. He breathes heavy as the feeling fades. I must have taken a bigger toss than I thought, he says with an anxious laugh. He looks down at the girl who is gawking up at him, terrified. He laughs and pushes himself up onto his knees. He quickly unfastens his belt and whips his dressing gown off, throwing it across the room. He is naked and fully erect. Oh, you're in for a rough night tonight. The girl hugs her body and cries, her fearful eyes transfixed on the rigid, pulsating penis. Once again, Xian's expression quickly returns to pain and confusion. This time, he cries out loud. The girl lies silent and motionless. He reaches down and clutches his member. He cries out again and appears to be in agony. Something is wrong, he gasps. Then another wave of pain. He gasps for air as his face and eyes redden. His face seems to be swelling. He grasps at his body and then back to his penis. He cries out again with another wave. The girl manages to scramble out from under him and quickly clambers off the bed. She gets to her feet, turns and slowly edges away from Xian, who is now writhing in agony, clutching and grasping all over his body. He slowly reaches a hand out to the girl. Please, you have to help me. Call an ambulance. The petrified girl watches as Xian begins to scream and hold his penis. He falls forward onto the bed and rolls onto his back, frantically writhing, holding his penis, which now appears to be erupting in blood blisters. Quan's scream rises in key until it shatters his empty glass on the minibar counter, his mouth so wide it splits as his penis begins to dissolve into a dark red pulpy mess. The girl screams, shaking her head, not quite believing what she is witnessing. Chien flails and tries to gargle a scream as his skin, all over his body, begins to bubble and blister. A rank, murky grey smoke is beginning to rise out of his body. Blisters pop in many explosions of blood. Chien's movements become fewer and sporadic as he slips into unconsciousness. His body starts to dissolve into a smoking, charred, barbecue sauce coloured bloody mush and his eyes melt and sizzle like two overfried eggs in a pan. The girl screams again and runs for the door. She pulls it open and runs out and down the corridor, tearing past a shop porter, screaming the entire time. <laughs>